this is Freddy with Freddy Can Fly and in today's video we are going to be taking a look at the next step after the out of the box review on the OMP M2 V2 micro helicopter. Um, if you watched my previous segment we basically just popped the thing out of the box, reviewed the contents and um, still as of right now the machine sits as is. I have not touched or changed anything on here. Um, I have, however, um, prepared the binding procedure. Now, I'm a Spectrum user, so this video is going to pertain to the Spectrum aspect. If you're using, I know this can use Futaba <clears throat> and things like that, so I would assume the binding procedures are going to be somewhat similar, uh, but this video is for Spectrum. Um, so, first thing we're going to need to do is you're going to want to provide a satellite. Now, Spectrum does sell the antenna satellites that have like a little push bind button. I forget the serial number on them, but those come in really handy. In my case, I just had a DSMX model laying around here with the little single antenna, which actually it installed really nice. Um, all I did was just got a piece of uh, the double-sided sticky tape. I color around it with a black marker so it blends in all nice and fancy. But um, it's got the antenna coming off, and the cabling just goes right around the bottom here. So when I put my canopy on and off, I'm not messing with my antennas and then it just pokes right out the bottom so some people mount them uh, you know underneath or in the back so put your satellite wherever you wish um, of course you'll see here I've got the um, I didn't have a small cable laying around one of the really short guys I do have one on order so I'll replace it but right now I just had the the, the larger cabling um, so I just kinda coiled it up that of course plugs right into the satellite port um, it's kinda hard for you to see with my wiring but the satellite port is right up there. There's one for S-Bus and there's one for satellite, so it's really hard to mix the two up. And then I just kind of made it to where she plugs in nice and nice and neat, okay? So that's what I decided to do. So satellite you're going to need, that's the first thing. Now, if you don't have one of the push-button satellites, so in my case, what you're going to need to do, and this could be considered a bit of a hassle, but however, if you're a Spectrum user, you've already got the, the materials you need laying around anyways. Um, but what we're going to need to grab is, um, you can use a fly barless unit, like the AR7200 or 7210. But I just had this little uh, AR7010, actually, just a little receiver laying around. Um, you'll need a bind plug, okay? And then just a external power source. If you want to use an ESC and a flight pack, you can. In my case, I'm just going to use a little two-cell pack. And basically, all we're going to do is we're going to boot the receiver, bind our satellite to it, and then um, just plug the satellite cable back into here. And after that, our system should be bind and, in theory, should be ready to fly right out of the box. Um, now before we get into that, I'm going to show you guys just some of my pre-radio setups real quick on the Spectrum Radio. Um, I'm not going to get heavy into things like your, your, uh, your pitch ranges and your throttle curves and things like that because um, I still have yet to be able to really go out and <clears throat> thoroughly test the machine. So I'm just going to kind of do a basic overall. And then once I get into more of the tuning videos and things like that, we'll talk more about... Uh, you know, uh, programming and adjusting the fly barless system and your throttle curves and, and whatnot, okay? So, um, first things first, what I am going to do, um, just for the sake of this, is I'm going to go ahead and unplug my, my satellite cable right here so I can plug in the other one. Now, the nice thing is, is this is mounted already, so I don't have to unmount it to bind it because, um, to be 100% honest, I got too excited and actually mounted it on here, and I realized that the binding procedure was different but I can actually just plug in the, the other cable here and have my receiver hanging off. So that's totally fine. So let's do that. Let me grab my little receiver. Um, I've already got the bind plug in the designated binding port. Whatever receiver you're using, make sure that's, uh, that's done correctly, of course. So let me go ahead and flip this around. Okay, so we're simply going to plug into the satellite boom so that's done so this is all ready to go and then we'll all we're going to do is it's like any other heli guys we're just going to provide power and then this will go into a bind mode we're going to bind it to our transmitter now before we complete this step let's move this over to the side for just a quick moment and i wanted to talk about the some of the, the radio stuff that i did so uh let's pretend this is the, again it's brand new it's out of the box you just got it 
Um, first thing you're always going to want to do is your pre-radio setups and create a new model, everything like that. Okay, so um, anybody that does Spectrum, uh, hopefully you guys are pretty familiar with the system. Uh, let's see if maybe I can get you a little bit of a zoom in so we can take a look. Uh, sorry guys, I'm not really going double camera today or anything, but... Um, so of course, you know, you can go down to your model select, go ahead and select um, your new model, label it whatever you want, model type again will be helicopter. Um, you can name it, swash type as always. This is a, it's similar to the Beast X system to be honest. Um, it's almost identical in the way that it programs and stuff. So you're going to want to make sure that you're on normal or one servo 90, depending on how your uh, your transmitter reads. Uh, it is a default in most cases with Spectrum, so you can you can feel safe and skip that. But I always like to double check, right? So let's jump back over to list. Now this one, I'm using Spectrum DX7, um, and mine has this menu right here, which is going to enable my flight modes and throttle hold. Uh, it's a really easy mode to go into. Um, you're just going to go ahead and select which switch you want for each one. Okay, so I use I use B for my idle ups, and I use switch F for my hold switch. So you can go ahead and assign yours accordingly. Okay, now down at the bottom, it's going to have this little little series of of boxes here. And you'll notice that when I hit the switches it moves the, the little icon above to let you know which mode you're in. So with throttle hold, all you want to do is set position, what is that? Position zero, um, it lets you unhighlight it, right? See so if I scroll through, you can unhighlight or highlight. So basically what that means is on, on my, switch, uh, my switch F, position zero would mean throttle hold is not active. But if I do hit it into position one or two, you'll see it toggles. So even if I hit my switch B now, I stay in throttle hold, right? So this means my throttle hold is now active. It is a two position switch, so that's that's why I just go ahead and do like a double redundancy. That way when I'm flying, since I fly with, with pinch fingers, right? So if I want to cap my throttle hold, I can just go boop like that, okay? So that's how that works. And once we got that all done, we can go ahead and adventure out of this mode. Make sure all your switches are off and safe. Um, you can play around with things like your spoken flight mode and whatnot, but that's all personal preference, so I'm not going to take it with you. Um, this one, let's go here, channel assign. Um, now, when you very first enter this menu, you have your RX port assignments. Most of these are going to be default and designated, again, per fly barless system where your servo is plugged in and whatnot. Um, with this system being a little different, so this machine, from what I've researched... And again, guys, I should have more videos on this soon. Um, but in your normal mode, or I guess we could say your position zero on, on, your, on your idle up switch, is supposed to have a self-stabilization mode. And then as you toggle out into idle one or idle two, or position one or position two, um, it's supposed to deactivate that and give you, you know, more, more overall control and whatnot. So if we go into the, the RX port assignments, on the very bottom uh, right hand corner there, let's get the light back on, it's got that little next button. See that? Right there. Go ahead and click onto that and it brings you into the channel input configuration. Okay, channel input configuration. Now, from my research and my knowledge here, all you need to do is you're going to go down to the gear channel and once you highlight it, just toggle the switch that you want the gear channel to be tied to. I'm going to tie it to switch B, as you can see there, which is my idle ups. So now that the gear output is, is being controlled by my channel B, that's how, you know, again, when I toggle in between my flight modes and stuff, it'll let me use the self-stabilization feature. Um, I forgot what the default switch is for it. I don't know if it was like D or C or something. But usually if you just highlight it like this and it'll start flashing, you just toggle the switch that you want on off and then it'll set it automatically. So that's all really easy to do. So we're done there and then you can just go back to your list. Um, let's see. Trim setups we don't need. Okay guys, so that's going to be all that we need to do for the initial um, kind of pre-radio setup. 
Now, it does give you the option with these machines also, and, and, and again, guys, I'm testing this more. There's no right or wrong answer for some of these other questions that I'm going to get asked probably, but things like the DR and Expo settings, um, I do know that you can go in and go into your servo setups and play around with things like, um, let's see, where is your DR and Expo? Yeah, so your DR and Expo menus, so you can soften the sticks around center and whatnot. And and you can also, what you can do is you can assign all your, your DR and Expo settings, so position 1, 2, and 3, to your idle up. So it's almost kind of like how the V-Bar system works. You can have a different feeling in each, uh, each bank or each flight mode, if you will, at a different RPM. Some people also just assign the three position switch for DR and Expo. Um... To, you know, like switch D or switch C. That way you can try out different uh, feelings for each RPM. So let's say you want to fly at 2000, but you're not sure what amount of expo or whatever. You can go in and program three different values and then just put your switch where you want and it'll change. Um, I'm a little old school, guys. I just like to just hit a switch and, and fly my machine. I don't like to play around with all the gizmos. So if I do add any DR or Expo, I'm going to um, assign those to switch B as well. So everything on this machine is essentially tied to one switch. Um, because each mode I have is going to have a different RPM, so I may want a little more, a little less on the DR and Expos. I don't have any set values yet, so right now, um, I mean, they're default. I, I've, got, I've got 100 and 100 on dual rates, Expo at zero. I'm pretty positive that that number is going to change. If you want to, if you want me to recommend like a default, maybe shoot for like 20 to 30 percent on the Expo um, head speed, depending, of course. But since this uh, M2 V2 has a programmable system now, take in mind there's a lot of adjustability similar to the Beast X, where we can adjust servo throw and servo, you know, the dampening and the speed and the agility. So I want to fly the heli at default first and just see what it feels like then I'll have a more educated decision on what adjustments I can make, okay? Um, throttle cut, we don't need to worry about because I've already activated my throttle hold in the previous menus. Um, again, throttle curves, guys, um, I, I'm just I'm just rocking the plain Jane normal setup because I haven't had a chance to really take her out and fly. So here's a quick shot of my normal mode. Idle 1. Idle 2. These numbers may change drastically once I get it out and really give it a go. Um, pitch curves, I'm just leaving linear across the board. 0, 25, 50, 75, 100. If you want to adjust your normal mode, like on our larger helis, how it's usually um, a little bit uh, uh, less on the low end, you can do something like um, 40, 45, 50, and then go uh, 75, 100 if you want. I don't play around with normal mode, so I, I probably will just leave it linear. But if you wish to choose to, to, to switch that around, feel free to do so. I'm not going to worry about it. You don't need the gyro menu, uh, governor, tell me things. So that's it, guys. That right there is your basic radio setup, okay? So we don't need to worry about that too much anymore. Now all we need to do is, let's get, let's get this bad boy ready to bind. Now I could go back into the bind screen and do it, but I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to power down. Cause I like to I like to do the power up bind for some I'm I'm weird that way I guess. Um and let's get our our machine back over now. One thing I do want to do, guys, you do not have to do this and you are not required to do this, but I'm kind of a a safety Nazi, so I'm gonna just real quick I'm just gonna pop the main blades off. That way, if for any reason um, my settings were wrong or I was doing something I'm not supposed to be doing, I just don't want the machine to spool up on the bench. Um, I'm okay with leaving the tail on. So I'm not too worried about the tail spazzing out or anything. But let's see if I can pop this off real quick. Hey, let me grab a set of pliers. Sorry about this, guys. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to pop this off. And also, the reason I'm going to do this, too, is instead of just getting it right out of the box, binding it, and flying it, which that's what you should be able to do, um, it's kind of my job to really look at things from a different angle and a different aspect than most do. So I'm actually going to thoroughly bench test everything as well. I want to make sure my hold is is working, and I want to make sure that uh, you know all my servos are working properly and, and everything like that. Because let's be fair, guys, this is not necessarily a, an inexpensive micro heli. 
Uh, it is it is inexpensive in the manner that you know buying parts and whatnot is not very expensive. But um, these these kits usually retail about 350 uh, US minus things like shipping and everything. So I would hate to take it right out of the box and and have a slight malfunction. Plus um, I have not had a chance yet to actually throw a little pitch gauge on here and see if from the factory. Okay, these are supposed to be again out of the box ready to go. I don't know what my maximum and pitch range is set to or anything. You're just supposed to be able to go out and fly it. So I like to get into all the bells and whistles. So I'm going to take these off just to be safe. Okay, let's flip this over here so you guys can see. Now once I go ahead and plug this in, we should take, remember we're on our receiver right now, right? We're not even in theory connected to the helicopter except for the fact that I have this mounted. So let me go ahead and find my power port on my receiver. Mm -mm -mm. Right here. Let's go ahead and throw it in right here. Okay, boom. All right. So we've now entered into bind mode, standard stuff. I'm going to kind of back away a little bit. Let's do the bind. Binding. Wait for it. But boom, okay. So we now have successfully bound. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's disconnect power. Okay, pop that out. I'm gonna power down my radio. And guys, it's this simple, right? We're just gonna do a quick, uh, a quick swap out on these two cables. So I've, I've, I've never really experienced something like this before, to be honest, where you bind to an external source uh, and then plug in. It is a first for me. Again, take in mind, guys, I, I haven't played with everything out there so um, that might be a complete understatement but um, I'm gonna go ahead and just pop this back in bear with me here real quick boom that pops in there and honestly guys I might not even replace this little cable um I think I did a nice enough little wiring job that it just sits there nice and tight and if it's not fixing no reason to or I'm sorry if it's not broken no reason to fix it if it's not fixing it's been a long day for me guys um, so here we go. Let's try our first power up. Uh, please make sure again that your light polymer pack is fully charged. You don't want to um, damage the cell memory or anything. But uh, I believe they should come in the standard storage mode. So let's power it up, guys. First time here. My blades are off just for safety. So my stick is down. I'm gonna go ahead. And I'm gonna throw it into throttle hold, hold mode. just to be safe. Plug her in right here. Boom. Song and dance. Look at that. Okay. So we've got our solid light. Let's wait for the gyros to initialize. That's so cool. So it's, it's like a large, it's, it's like these bigger ones that we all love and play with. I mean, it does its little song and dance and its jumps. And uh, so here we go, guys. So we are bound. You can see by the solid LED. Um, minus the fact that my stupid cable's in the way, but you can see the the... LED indicators um, and again guys I've got a video that'll be coming out soon that'll show you how to adjust everything on here you can adjust every servo independently um, you have the you have pitch speed agility uh, and gain values so that's gonna be really interesting um, again it's just got a set button kinda like the beast X um, everything looked to center up really well swash looks to be relatively level and again I'm moving it in the in the the, the swash is moving too so Gyros are active. Okay, so right now I should be in throttle hold, so I'm going to check with my radio if I thro I'll throttle up. Okay, cool. So nothing's spooling up on me. Um, travel looks to be pretty decent. I don't see... I think the swash looks pretty level, guys. I'm going to I'm gonna try a test flight on this right out of the box. Uh, forward, elevator, backwards, right, left, right, left. Cool. Everything seems to work. Of course, your rudder doesn't move because it's done with an actual tail motor, so that's going to speed up or slow down. Um, so let's do a quick little bench test, though. I'm going to come out of throttle hold. Let's see if it spools up in normal. I'm going to hold it to make sure it's all safe here, but let's see if it spools up. Ah, cool. Look at that. So you can hear the tail. It's got great response, too. Cool, everything looks good, guys. Let's see. Swash is moving, everything's counterbalancing. Now, one thing I'm gonna do, and I don't recommend this because it's probably not the safest idea in the world because my tail is on, 
But let's check to see if our idle up modes work. Okay, so I'm going to do an idle up here. Stunt one. Stunt one works. Stunt two. And throttle hold. Ba boom. Alrighty, guys, so that's going to be the end of this segment. Um, again, in the next video, a couple of videos actually, these plugs are tight. Um, I'm going to do a series on the bench setup. We're going to put a pitch gauge on here. We're going to check everything and see just how reliable this is right from the factory. Um, we're also going to go through how to make your adjustments on the programmable fly barless unit that they've got on here. Uh, and then we'll talk more about throttle curves, pitch curves, DRs, and expos. Um, but the next video I should be posting is going to be a right out of the box, everything default test flight. Um, and we're just going to kind of have to see how it goes, guys. So thank you so much for watching. I'm very, very excited about this product. Feel free to like and subscribe. And remember, my friends, if Freddie can fly, so can you.